video lesson looks at how light interacts with matter, emission spectra, and absorption spectra. You recall from the last video lesson, we looked at how light interacts with matter and zeroing in on the electron. So here we have a, a nucleus in the bottom left corner and the electron shown in red at, at the ground state or the first energy level. When a photon comes around with just the right energy, it can excite that electron, causing the electron to hop up to a higher energy level. And here comes the photon. Now the energy of that photon depends upon its frequency um, or its wavelength. And if the energy of that photon is equal to the change in energy from the first to the second or the first to the third energy level or so on, then that electron is going to become excited. In this case, it hops up to the next energy level, but it won't stay long before de-exciting and coming back down to that ground state. And in the process, it will also emit a photon. And this is how light interacts with matter. Over at the left of our screen, we have a box of hydrogen, and we have a photon gun that's shooting photons into the hydrogen. And in the middle, we have our, our zoomed up image, and you can see the electrons orbiting the nucleus, and some of those photons have just the right energy to excite the electron. And over on the right, you can see the energy changes, electron excited, comes back down and gives off another photon. Now, that's a rather simplistic model of electron yellow orbiting nucleus red. Uh, we know that this can't be the case because remember from our, our field and forces theory that a moving charge creates an electromagnetic field that's changing. So this uh, electron orbiting the nucleus, much like a planet orbits the Earth, would, would create uh, constant radiation, electromagnetic radiation, um, whose energy is given by E equals HF. So this atom would constantly lose energy. Um, there's no way the electron could orbit a nucleus like this. It would lose energy and it would continue to fall towards the nucleus. So a more complicated model of the atom exists. Uh, those of you who study chemistry will have learned about orbitals or probabilities where one can find an electron. Um, for the purposes of this course, it's okay to use this simple model. Just understand its limitations. Here we have some hydrogen gas that contains billions and billions and billions of atoms. Uh, those electrons that orbit those atoms can be excited by radiation. Photons coming in, um, maybe one in a thousand of those photons will have just the right energy to excite that electron and it will hop up an energy level. And when it comes down to the lower energy level, it itself will emit a photon. And we can, we can gather or observe those photons coming from that gas and we can use a spectrometer, a spectroscope to analyze the photons. Spectrometer has a diffraction grating, but you can think of it as a prism that bends the light coming into it um, according to its frequency. So the higher frequency of, or the blue light uh, will bend more than the lower frequency red light, separating it and allowing us to analyze the photons coming from that hydrogen sample. The spectrometer will give us what we call an emission spectrum for hydrogen. Uh, and in this case, because of the discrete number of energy levels available in the hydrogen atom, there are four emission lines for hydrogen uh, that occur in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So these are the ones that we can see, two red, a blue, and, and a violet. And this is characteristic of hydrogen. And if we replace the hydrogen with helium gas, we'd have an emission spectrum that looked like this. In fact, every element in the periodic table has a, a unique characteristic emission spectrum. And if you had a mixture of elements, well, you'd have an, a mixture of the emission spectra. And if we didn't have any gas there, we'd be just looking at white light, say, from the star or from our sun. And the emission spectrum in that case would be a continuous spectrum as shown. Now, if the light that was exciting that hydrogen gas was coming from behind the gas relative to where we are, we have what's called an absorption spectrum. And those electrons that are being excited and then de-exciting and giving off photons, well, there'd be billions and billions and billions and billions of atoms 
between the star and our spectroscope and it would be just as likely that the photons travel away from us as they would travel towards our spectroscope. So what you end up getting is the light that's being absorbed by the electrons will not reach the spectroscope and will get what's called a dark line or an absorption line. And there are the other absorption lines and they really should be black. Um, they're showing white on this slide. This is the hydrogen absorption spectrum and again all of the elements in the periodic table have a unique absorption spectrum that matches the emission spectrum. It's all about where the light is coming from, whether it's an absorption or an emission spectrum. Let's summarize the main points in the video lesson. Uh, number one, electrons do not orbit the nucleus in elliptical paths or circular paths. Uh, just a simplification, uh, we are, we're using a simple model here and we know that moving charge creates uh, electromagnetic radiation and that's energy and uh, if that were the case the atom would continually lose energy and the electron would spiral into the nucleus. And the second point was absorption and emission spectra and the challenge here is whether you have an absorption or an emission spectrum and it all has to do with where the source, uh, the original source of the photons comes from. Um, if it comes off to the side, if it's not coming towards you, understand that any of those photons that pass through, say, the sample of hydrogen gas, could be any, any element, um, would not reach you anyways. It's just the ones that are being excited, the photons that are being emitted from excited electrons that would reach the observer. And in this case, when the source is off to the side, not in your direct line of sight for the observer, you have what's called an emission spectrum. That's characteristic of the gas. If your source comes from behind the matter that's being excited by the, uh, the light, then you're going to see an absorption spectrum. And the reason for this is a lot of those photons from the source will come right on through for the observer, but all those billions and billions and billions of atoms that are in that sample, uh, the ones, the electrons that are excited, it's about a 50-50 chance of that photon being emitted when it comes back down from the excited state that it will not travel to the observer and you'll get dark lines emission spectrum. All right, let's try a practice problem. And the problem goes like this. Which one of the following provided evidence in support of Bohr's contribution to atomic theory? And that is that electrons are found only at discrete energy levels. And your choices are the Doppler effect, B, Geiger-Marsden experiment, C, absorption spectra, and uh, D, uh, discovery of isotopes. Let's pause our viewer and try this question. Of course, the answer here is absorption spectra. Uh, also, emission spectra would be uh, a suitable answer. Practice question number two goes like this. Under which conditions could emission lines be observed and which conditions produce absorption lines? And th here are three conditions. Light from a distant star is analyzed. Light from a star passes through a large gas cloud and then to Earth. And light from a star is analyzed has one of its that's the star's planets traverses the star. Remember with an absorption spectrum you see all of the frequencies, all of the visible light except for discrete frequencies, the black lines shown here. And with an emission spectrum you see only discrete frequencies, the colored lines here. And to finish the question, here are four choices, A, B, C, D. So with choice A, uh, you get an absorption spectrum with condition 1 and an emission spectrum with condition two. Pause your viewer and try this question. In condition one, light is coming from a source, the star, and so light of particular frequencies will be produced. We'll see specific colored lines depending upon the composition of the star, likely hydrogen lines and helium lines. We're gonna see an emission spectrum. Or condition number two is light travels through the gas cloud Certain frequencies are going to be absorbed by uh, the atoms, the electrons of the atoms, and re-emitted in all different directions. So we're going to see 
dark lines depending upon the composition of that gas cloud. This is an absorption spectrum. Condition number three, depending upon the sensitivity of our equipment, we could get an emission and absorption spectrum here. Certainly an emission spectrum from the star as a source, and as that light from the star passes through the atmosphere of the planet in front of it, uh, some of that light interacts with the atmosphere making up that planet and giving us uh, an absorption spectrum as well. So I would say uh, three satisfies both absorption or emission spectra. Our answer here is C.